Good morning, family. Good morning, Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Let us say that lovely line from the Ernest Holmes prayer on page a two of your program. This is the day of Christ. Together. This is the day of Christ. The day of truth. The day of, truth. The day of birth into greater good. The day of birth into greater good. As Celine Dion sings so beautifully. So this is Christmas. And what have you done? Another year ended, a new one begun. I wish, indeed I more than wish, I know for you and yours, all the people in your life that matter, those who have gone before to a greener place, and those that bless our lives on a day-to-day -day basis, and those that we will meet in the coming days, I wish for you and all that you come into contact, God's beauty, God's blessing, God's joy, God's allness. Not just today, not just this Christmas, not just for the new year, but always. You know, please turn to your neighbor and say, Christ in you is the reason for the season. Merry Christmas. Christ in you is the reason for the season. Merry Christmas. I don't know about you, you see. I said your neighbor, you know, not the old church. <laughs> Christmas is a really mushy time for me. me easy to ball, and the little children running up and down in, in the sanctuary, I feel all welled up. And we were singing, um, Oh, come all ye faithful, and there was my old friend, Garth Sanguinetti, coming into the sanctuary, and I, my heart just filled up again. So me easy for ball. So if me start to ball, just join me. <laughs> So I was listening to the Celine song I mentioned when someone sent me a TED talk by an amazing young woman called Michaela de Prince. Have you heard of Michaela de Prince? Let me tell you. She is the prima ballerina of the Netherlands Dance Theatre. And she was born um, in Sierra Leone and she was orphaned at age three. And in the orphanage, she was treated like a pariah because she had vitiligo. Vitiligo is a skin condition that leaves you, it affects your melanin, it leaves you with white blotches all over. And of course, her tribes people thought that those, those blotches on her skin meant that she was the devil's child. And so nobody would have anything to do with her. And in the orphanage, the children are numbered from one to 27. One being the top anaris, going all the way down the favored, onto number 27. She was 27. And her best friend and only friend was another little girl who was number 26. And the way the universe works is just amazing. I mean, it's, we that study science of mind and new thought are not surprised at the exquisite synchronicities of life. But listen to this. One day, she's four and groveling and playing in the, in the dirt in the orphanage yard, and an old crumpled magazine blows up against the gate, and on the cover is the picture of a ballerina in a white tutu on point. And her little heart, her little soul, her little consciousness, well, it wasn't a little consciousness, it was a huge consciousness, immediately knew that that was her destiny. And so she reached with all her little might through the bars of the gate and managed to touch, grasp it with two fingers and pull it in towards her. And she folded it up and she kept it. Synchronicity number two. An American woman adopted her. And when she went to Sierra Leone to the orphanage to pick her up, she said to pick me hold on to another one, number 26. Not to be separated. Uh-uh. So it's all or nothing. This is a package deal. They, she thought they were joined at the hip or something. Michaela wouldn't let her go. So she said, OK, I'll take both of them. And so she did. And back to their new home they went with their new white mother. And she didn't know how to communicate what was in her little heart. So she produced this little 
shredded magazine and showed it to her new mom, who somehow instantly knew this is what the child's soul, this is what the child's passion, this is what the child was here to do. And she sent her to ballet school. Fast forward to the prima ballerina of the Netherlands Dance Theatre. Please Google her and watch her on YouTube. It will just move you to tears and you can call my name. Say, so you can say, Reverend John Cosett. Um, I'm not ashamed. What's the last name? Her, her name is Michaela de Prince. But just, just, you can Google ballet dancer with vitiligo, or you can, you know how the, the net is. If you just get one word, Michaela, they'll give you 400,000 Michaelas, and you can choose the one that's the ballet dancer. So my friends, what has a little girl's dream that triumphs over a seeming misfortune have to do with the story of Christmas. You're sitting there wondering, don't? What does the story of uh, someone rec realizing their full potential have to do with what we are celebrating today? Well, her story reminds me of the much-loved Christmas song, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Rudolph didn't have vitiligo, but he had a red nose. Everybody knows the story, the, the story of Rudolph? When Christmas Eve turned foggy and Santa was worried that he wouldn't be able to deliver the gifts, the former outcast saved Christmas by leading Santa's sleigh by the light of his bright, glowing red nose. And he became admired and respected by all the other reindeer. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that um, Rudolph story. Uh, it was... It was written by a man called um, May. May. May was his, his last name. Um, I'm trying to find his, his first name. But anyway, Mr. May wrote this story, The uh, Red-Nosed Reindeer, for his granddaughter or his daughter, I'm not, I can't remember which, to cheer her up at Christmas. And he shared the story at his, the Christmas staff party where he worked at Montgomery Ward in August 1939. And he wrote that story and people loved it. And so his first choice for a name for Rudolph was Rolo. But the people at Montgomery Ward said, no, Rolo is too, is too carefree. So he picked Reginald. But that was considered too royal. And in the original story, Rudolph did not stay with the other reindeer at the North Pole. Rudolph was in a room by himself at, in his reindeer home with his reindeer parents. And when Santa went to call, he saw this strange red glow coming from uh, one of the rooms. And when he looked, it was Rudolph in there. And he asked him to come and, and, and draw the sleigh. Montgomery Ward printed the story, and it sold $2.5 million in 1930, 2.5 million copies in 1939. And it was reissued in 1946 where it sold, when it sold over 3.5 million copies. So in 1949, Johnny Marks, who is May's brother-in-law, wrote a song called Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, which was originally sung by cowboy Gene Autry. And his song has sold more than 12 million copies, second only to Bing Crosby's White Christmas. So two of our Sunday school children, all in white, and Aunt Lilith and Uncle Noel are going to perform it for us. And to dance the role of Rudolph, we are blessed to have Antonio Campbell from Ashe, who will perform Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer. Help me welcome them.
of applause while I found it, please. Thank you, Antonio and Uncle Noel and Aunt Lilith. Wonderful, wonderful. The Rudolph of us, the part of us that doesn't fully comprehend that we are spiritual beings in human form. There is something within us that knows that same something that was within that little girl in the orphanage in Sierra Leone that knew her greatness and the glory of her soul. Something in each of us that calls us to say, here am I, send me. I'll draw the sleigh of life. I will fill it with the treasures of God's gifts of goodness and kindness and mercy and love and respect for my fellow human beings. And some of us are too big to come down the chimney. And besides, in Jamaica, we have very few chimneys, just a few up in the hills um, at some of the houses. So if, have a look in the mirror and turn sideways. If you can't go down the chimney, that's OK. Because right where you are, you can begin to actualize the potential of Almighty God within you. And that, my friends, is really the message of this Christmas season. Just like Rudolph's nose, let your life shine, your light shine. And if you are ladies, you know that you powder the nose to keep down the shine. But there is that within your heart that is a glow all the time. And so I want you to find within you your passion, that thing that you feel called to share at this Christmas time and allow it to find its expression through you. Michaela de Prince didn't become a prima ballerina just by wishing. It took a lot of work. And anybody here who does any form of exercise knows you don't get to the ideal weight or uh, the ideal whatever measurements just by looking at it while you eat plum pudding and think. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to break my own rule because I have pudding made by Sandra Cooper, and you have to break the rules for that. <laughs> but truly, we have to work at it. We're not here, Reverend Alma used to say, we're not here on holiday. Her daughter, Serena, is here on holiday, though. Welcome, Hi. welcome. <laughs> and even when she's on holiday, she remembers her spiritual practice and comes to church. So welcome, my sis. Yes. So friends, this message is an important message, as simple as that tune is and as childlike as you might think it is. You notice that it's always the childlike things that grab you. It's the simple things in life, and that's why children have such a special place in my heart. And you know, sometimes people say, they distract me because they're trying to be still or be quiet and the children are making noise or they're up and down. They don't distract me. You come into my heart and make as much noise as you like. Um, that's how we discover the world, and that's what they're here to do. I never forget Gracie. Hi, Gracie. Never forget her up and down the sanctuary. You know, she owned the place. She still does. And um, all of our young people, in fact, that, that come here to Sunday school, Funday school, and that do battle with Auntie Carmen and Aunt Lilith and Reverend Anna and Uncle Lauren, um, all of them own the place. And that's what I want for you. I want you to own this center for spiritual living, to make it yours. There's a hummingbird that has made it hers. She just came in. She always does it when I speak it, um, but she doesn't bless me, thank God. Um, 
so we need to look deep within ourselves and acknowledge the issues that create the biggest problems for us. We need to look within ourselves and acknowledge the biggest issues. It may be a physical characteristic. It may be this Christmas, it may be an emotional issue. It may be a quirky style preference. Socks. <laughs> Something that is yours to own, friends. And you may not be able to understand why people get stuck with it. But you can transform the thing that you think, that other people think is odd, into a statement of who you are as a beloved expression of the living spirit almighty that knows no obstacles. And there's a couple of, 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 of uh, there, there are a couple um, who have done an interpretation, a metaphysical interpretation of what Jesus might say to Rudolph on a Christmas. You know, there was this, there was this um, fad at one time a few years ago. What would Jesus do? WWJD. Well, this is a WWJS. What would Jesus say? And they say that Jesus said, would say, Rudolph. Quite often in this world, your special gifts may be misunderstood. That happened with me, you know. The more I developed my Christ consciousness, the more I became consciously one with God, and the more I was misunderstood by those who chose not to get it. So don't worry, my body. If people make fun of your nose and judge you based on appearances because you are a little different from others, make it okay and be kind to them. Love them and see the Christ's light in them, for they really don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they are doing. If they knew the essence of God within you, all they would feel was the reverence that is due every single living thing on earth. Every single living thing has God within it. Every blade of grass, every grain of sand, every crawling thing. Yes, the lizards to friends. It's easy to see it in the hummingbird, isn't it? Not so easy in a snake or a lizard, but the energy is there. It's all God. And so here's the deal, Rudolph. Regardless of what anyone tells you, no matter what you are faced with, let your light shine. I have put you on earth for your light to shine. And friends, God put you on earth to let your light shine. And so your assignment for the Christmas season, you have already done it once for the day, is to let your light shine. You're letting it shine by being here. But beginning tomorrow for the 12 days of Christmas, that's until January 6, I want you to read the meditation by Paramahansa Yogananda, which is found in my Christmas message in your program and which we read together earlier. Read it every day from tomorrow, beginning Christmas Day, until January 6th. And if you're not present and don't have a program with my Christmas message in it, sorry for you. But you can get the message on the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living Facebook page and on our website. So Google it and find it. And let us do this assignment of reading that meditation for joy every day of the 12 days of Christmas. So please turn to your neighbor and say, your light is shining brightly. And then say to them, from the Rudolph in me, and then say, from the Rudolph in me to the Rudolph in you, Merry Christmas. And you can give them a hug. From the Rudolph in me to the Rudolph in you. Friends, from the Rudolph in me to the Rudolph in you, Merry, Merry Christmas. Namaste.